Okay, so this evening we're going to try to work a little bit on a Asteroids-like program. Asteroids-like game using the Unity game engine. Whoa! Setting some landmines there. Whew. Okay, that gives you the general idea, kind of how the game is going to go. Uh, it's very much like sort of the, the classic asteroids. We have a ship that flies around. We have asteroids that we have to avoid and destroy. We get points for hitting, for blowing up asteroids. And we have enemy ships that come on. They shoot at us, and so on and so on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start over again. So let's open a new project and we'll call this new, there we go, 2D and we're gonna call it, oh, asteroid. And we're gonna call it, we're gonna put it in the asteroid folder. Okay. All right, so the first thing, I'm gonna to go to the uh, the asset store and I've already purchased, quote unquote, some free assets for the actual asteroid graphics and the ships. I'm using some free assets. I'll show you where I'm going here. So let's see, show what they are. Come on. All right, so in here I have the Galaxia 2D space shooter. I think that's, uh, yeah, okay. We're gonna import that one. And there's bullets, there's enemies, there's players. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna grab all that. This is just a sprite pack. Okay, import. All right. And then for the asteroids, uh, we have 2D pixel asteroids. And we're gonna import that. And we're going to really just use the sprites from there. Import that. Just make sure we get that. Go back to the scene. So grab one of those, throw that in there. Okay. So there's an asteroid. That's really all we're going to need is an asteroid. Okay, so we got one asteroid. Let's just jump right in, I guess. Uh, we grabbed an asteroid, throw that in there. And we'll go to the sprite pack over here where we have the player. And we'll use this as the player. We'll throw that up there. And we'll have an enemy, and for the enemy, we will choose this one. Throw that right up there. All right. Now we'll move some things around just so we can see them. So let's see, the player's looking really small, and the enemy is looking really small. So why don't we scale those? So we'll scale those by a factor of like three. And the asteroid's big enough. And we'll do three, that. Now they're looking pretty reasonable. Let's name them something safer. We'll just call this asteroid. And we'll call this player. And we'll call this enemy. All right, we're done. Hit play. That's not that exciting. Let's do something. Let's make these things work. Now, uh, I'm gonna do something that I don't always do. I'm gonna go to Edit Project Settings, and we're gonna go to Physics 2D, and we're gonna turn off gravity. Okay, so here's the gravity settings, zero and negative 9.81 meters per second downward. So we're gonna put zero for gravity. Oops, sorry, my phone ringing there. Because we're in space and there is no gravity, something like that. And we're gonna turn that off. And now, let's say we've got the player. We're, let's worry about the player first. So for the player, we're gonna to want to use the WASD keys to move the player around. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a script, new script, and we'll call this the player, or, um, 
Okay, we'll call it the we'll call it rocket physics. Okay. So let's look in rocket physics. Open that up. And nothing going on there so far. All right. So what we need to do is in the update we will say if input dot uh, key down sorry get key down uh, and key code is going to be w so if we get a key down for w we're going to do something now we generally would want to push, put some kind of force on the player. Now, in order to do that, we need to add a component on the player, which is going to be a rigid body 2D. Okay. And we can leave gravity scale to one now. We don't have to change any of these things because it's just going to work because we have zero gravity. And so, anyway, there's that. Now let's jump back over here. We have rigid body 2D. We're going to get key down, and when that happens, we are going to do the following. We are going to say, okay, get component, and the component we're going to get is that rigid body 2D, and we want to add a force. And we're going to use go the force in the up direction, uh, and to get that, we're going to say transform dot up. Now, what that means, transform dot up, is the green, if you look over here, like for example, we're going to select that. The green direction here is up. Okay. So that would actually be the Y direction, right? So if I move Y, okay. And that means even if I rotated that sprite around or other things as part of that sprite, up would always be up for this. So it's important to have the forward direction of your sprite pointing in that up direction there. All right, so let's uh, go back to our script. So transform up, and we'll give it some magnitude. We'll make it a little, a little stronger, so 10. Okay, that'll be our magnitude there. Let's save that. Now, if all goes well, when I hit W, our ship goes forward. A little bit. So maybe that magnitude wasn't quite big enough, so we'll make it bigger. I'll say 20. And try that again. All right, and it floats up. And it floats off the screen, <laughs> which isn't too great. So Let's write a function. Okay, well, let's do a few things. First, we're going to go into our players function here, and we're going to do one important thing. We're going to make, there's only going to be one player. Okay, so we're not going to reinstantiate this at all. There's only going to be one player. We're going to keep track of things like score and stuff like that in here. Uh, and so let's create a static game object. Whoops static and make it public static public static game object s okay and in start we're going to say if s equals null keep that there sorry then s equals game object else and we'll just say return and actually let's do this let's even like we'll say debug dot error log error already instantiated player
okay? Because we only want to call this once. We only want to have one instance of the player. Whoops. So there he is. All right. And make that look sort of pretty. No, oh, I like in my code to look sort of like that. That's the style I like. I don't know. You can have your own style. Next time I'm not going to take that much time putting that anyway. Okay. So it's a static. I now refer to that through rocket physics. I can get at the uh, singleton of the game object for the player. That'll come in handy later. Trust me. Okay. So the player goes up now. In update, as the player moves around, we want to make it so that the player will roll over the screen. So if it flies off the top, it should appear back on the bottom. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, another library up here. I'm going to create an asset, create a C sharp script, and this is going to be my own my math library. Okay. So. In my math, we're not going to have these things. And we're not even going to be a mono behavior. But we're going to have functions. OK, the first function is going to be, it's going to return a vector to. And we're going to make this wrap. And it's going to be passed a vector to. That is a position. And a vector to. That is the bounds. Okay. And let's see what to do with that. What to do? We're going to say we're gonna check, and that should be a capital W, I guess. I would you like that? We're going to say, call it uh, static, uh, public static. So everybody can call this function. Must have return type uh, vector two. Oops. Here we go. What's it still complaining about now? Every method must have return type. What am I doing wrong here? A static constructor must be parameterless. Oh, what happened here? I forgot to name it. <laughs> it went, the name went away. Whoops. I was losing my mind there. OK, not all code pass return a value. All right, now we're getting back into things. OK, return. Pause. So we wind up returning the thing that got sent in. Um, so we say if pause dot x is greater than bounds dot x and we'll actually use math f dot abs greater than bounds dot x we're going to say uh, pause dot x times equals negative one f okay so that will flip the sign if it crosses that boundary and we're going to do the same exact thing for y and that okay now what we're also going to do is we're going to push the object just a tiny bit so Here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, just so it so it crosses that boundary, we're going to, or actually could pull it a little bit. So we're just, it's going to flip, and we're going to say, pause x times equals 0.95. Oof. OK. And that's going to push it a little bit onto the uh, 
the other side. So it doesn't wind up just flipping and then accidentally flipping back and flipping back and forth just in case. So it's gonna push it so that it winds up inside the boundary for sure, just a little bit, 0.95. Right, so it's gonna get to the edge and then flip to the other side with a little bit of motion still to it. All right, so that is our pause function. Um, okay, I guess we don't need that. All right, so now let's go back to player, our player script. All right. And we will say in here, we will say transform dot pause ition. Oops. Equals my math. Is that what I called it? Yep, class my math dot wrap. And I'm going to pass it two things. I'm going to pass it transform dot position. And we have to create this boundary thing. So what we're going to do up here is we're going to say uh, vector two bounds equals new vector two. And we're going to make the boundaries. Uh, X is going to be, let's call it eight. And Y is going to be five. Okay, that's going to be good enough. Might just, might be slightly bigger than that, but that'll work. And we're going to refer to that in there. So we're going to say bounds. Now, if all goes well, we should wrap around the top and bottom. And if all doesn't go well, maybe you noticed what I did wrong in the code. All right, so we're going up, and it worked. Okay. So as long as I, just holding down the key isn't gonna do anything. I have to actually tap the key. So this might be a case where I just wanna hold down the key. Now, in order to make that work, uh, instead of get key down, I'm just gonna do get key. So as long as I hold down the W key, I'm gonna add a force. So maybe I'm gonna scale that back a little bit now. All right. Now, the problem is that I've just taken my hand off the keyboard and it's going on and on and on and on forever. That's not great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a player here and I'm gonna give it some drag. So we'll give it a linear drag of five and an angular drag of two for the heck of it. So I hit play and I'm gonna have some drag on there so that as I let go, it will slow down again. It also affects how fast it gets going. So maybe five is too much. Let's set that to, and we can test this kind of interactively. Let's do that. All right. Five is too much. Let's set that to three. Three is still a little too much. We'll set that to two. Two's pretty good. Okay, well, for now, uh, even one. I like one. Okay, so now remember, we gotta set that again once the game is actually shut off, so. We'll set that to one, and now let's make it so the ship can turn. That's a good idea. I forget uh, how long we've been going already, but let's set the ship so it can turn. So we go over to our code over here, and we want to say if we want another input input get key key code whoops key code. And now we use the A key. And if we pressed A, we want to do something similar to here, this get component. But instead, we're going to say get component, and we're going to add a torque. 
Okay, now torque is just a, 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 a directional, or, or it's going to be a spin, and so there's only, we don't pass it a, we don't pass it a vector, we just pass it a magnitude. So let's say, hmm, I don't know, five. Let's see what happens. Now, we're going to want to say, get key D, and go in the opposite direction. All right. Let's go over here and see what happens now. All right. All right. So I can turn left and right, and I can go in that direction. I'll fly all over the place. Pretty cool. Now, you'll see I've probably tuned that wrong for the that position there. So let's change that bounds. And do, do, where is that? That's in here. So eight was not quite enough. We'll call it nine. And you know what? Let's do something also more interesting with this. So in here, we'll have static, whoops, uh, vector two bounds, all right? So here we'll put this as T bounds for temporary bounds, right? And we'll say bounds equals T bounds, okay? Oops, <laughs> that'll help. All right, so now, if you just call it like that, it will set that to the boundaries. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another version of this function. And I'm gonna call it just wrap, but I'm not going to pass it a boundary, okay? And I am not going to set that there. So it's just going to be that code. So this way you can use the this version to set the boundary and then check. And I'm even going to do this. Watch this, ready? This is, this is tricky for me. Return. Wrap, pause, and just that. So this function will set the boundary up based on the temporary bounds and then call the other one. All right? And if you don't set the T bounds, it will just use whatever the T bounds is already set to. All right? So now we can, from anywhere, as long as we've called it once, we can then uh, use that. Okay. Got some noise going on in the background, sorry. All right, so that should still work. All right. And all right, we're good to go. Now, let's make the asteroid move and the ship move. All right, so how do we do that? We're gonna just assign a random force for these guys. So let's say we'll start with the asteroid. And we're going to create a asteroid function. So new script, asteroid fun and asteroid fun is going to be simple for starters we're just going to do now let's see remember we in our rocket physics here we did oh where is it now do, do, do. we added a force in the up direction so let's go ahead and do that let's do the same thing over an asteroid fun so during start we're going to start it floating in a direction okay but we have this transform dot up. So it's only gonna go in the up direction, but let's, we wanna rotate it or do something interesting with it. So 
let's do transform dot rotation. Uh, no, we'll just say rotate. <laughs> this way we can just say, oh, zero, zero, and we're gonna give it a Z rotation, right? Uh, we're gonna call it random value. And we're gonna multiply that times what 360. Okay, so we're gonna randomly rotate the asteroid around and then apply a force to it. Let's see what happens. Let's see if I got that right. Well, I did the random rotation, but the force didn't have anything happen to it. Why is that? Because I don't have rigid body on there. Duh. Add component, physics 2D. Rigid body 2D. All right, and for the heck of it, I'm gonna go ahead and put a rigid body 2D on my enemy as well. Because <sighs> I know I'm gonna need one of those. There we go. All right, so now let's start again. All right, it's puttering along there. And I can fly over it, which isn't too good, but it's moving pretty slowly. Let's uh, hmm, give it a bunch more force there. So let's say that we're gonna multiply that by, let's do it something random. Random dot value times, oh, come on. All right, that should give it some serious oomph. All right. And since it has no friction, it will just keep floating forever. All right, good. Now you'll notice it was flying off the side of the screen, which is no good. So in our asteroid function, we can use our wrap again. So here we'll say transform dot position equals my math wrap. And this one we're just gonna add transform dot position. Because at this point, assuming that, uh, yeah, assuming that the other guy got called, let's see, let's do this just to make sure. Player is going to call, so in rocket physics, we're gonna call this, where did it go? Mm, this, also right up here. So during start, we're gonna call that. And so we know we've called it at least once and the boundaries have been set up and we never have to actually do that again, okay? So bounds is set there. And from now on, we can just call wrap. Okay, good. So now hit play. I can fly, I fly off the top. Let's see, the asteroid should similarly, hello. Hello, asteroid, where'd you go? Oh, it kept flying, why is that? I probably didn't save the function. Of course not, save. All right. Slow moving asteroid. Oh, way too slow. You know what I'm gonna do just to make this a little more exciting and fun? I'm gonna go ahead, because I know I'm gonna need it anyway, I need a circle collider on that guy. And I'm gonna need a circle collider on all these. 2D, 
Circle Collider, and on Enemy, Physics 2D, Circle Collider. All right. The cool thing about that now is that I can also bump into it and push it off the screen. Push that guy, too. Ah, all right. Now, let's see. For some reason, that was really kind of pushing it too. Oh, well, a circle collider is really way too big. Let's take that, and we'll make it 0.12. And the enemy, we'll make that also 0.12. And the asteroid uh, is pretty good. We'll tighten it up just a little bit. All right, so now it'll look a little bit. Make a little bit more sense. Whoa. Why is my ship all crazy now? What did I do? I must have accidentally reduced my angular drag. All right, well, let's increase my angular drag now. Whoops. I didn't collide with him. What happened? I collided with him. I broke something. Let's look at the asteroid here. The asteroid simulated to use mass. Linear, uh, it's awake. Oh, don't want that to be a trigger. That, uh, that went south real quick. But you get to see me do some debugging. All right. All right, we're interacting with things. Uh, I think I need a little bit more angular drag still on the player here. Interesting. All right. Save that. Now let's also go and create a script for the player, for the enemy, excuse me. Enemy. Create an ad. And the very first thing we're going to do in that script is wrap its position. Get better with my transform position and yeah, I think I upset my uh, Intella completion, whatever it is. I'll fix that in a second. My math dot wrap, and we'll just do. Transform position. Save that. And I'm going to close that. And I'm actually going to quit that. We're going to go back to it in a second. We're going to reopen it, and everything will be good. Then. So let's push this guy up. And yep, he flies off too now. All right, everybody is wrapping nicely. OK. Boom. Boom. Wonderful. I'm enjoying this. OK. Now, this could be important for later. So say we want the enemy to know about the player. Now, the enemy script, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Sometimes the enemy script, if we wanted it to know about the player, object. You can set that in Unity, right? So within here, say we had public, oops, don't update. Um, we had public game object 
player. Okay. Because we want to point at the player later. We want to interact with the player. So we declare this. And so in order to have that find that, oh, saving it would be a good thing. Not that. Save. Okay. So now enemy, we can pass it player there. Okay. So now let's start working on enemy because we're going to have we're going to have multiple enemies. So we'll make it a prefab. Okay. So drag that over there. And we know we want to have multiple asteroids. We want that to be a prefab. Put that over there. Okay. We get rid of the originals. We delete. And we delete. So now let's go back to look at our prefabs. Enemy prefab, open prefab. You'll see that this is set this to none. Now, this gets painful because you say to yourself, okay, let me just go back to my sample scene and take the player and, well, I can't drag that in there. And can't do that. So the question is, how do I get the player from the enemy? Because I want to do something like point to it or something like that. Now, you have a couple of options. You can always do the traditional player equals, uh, what would you call it, like game object dot find and you give the name right but instead what we can do now since we declared the in rocket physics we have a static game object right so this guy over here is the game object, and we can refer to it from there. Okay. So, all right. So there it is. Whoops. Yes. So, for example, what we want to do is we want to point the player, point the enemy, excuse me, at the player. So here's a trick to do that. We're going to subtract. We're going to say uh, vector two new angle. Or new vec new vector we'll call it. We're gonna create a vector that winds up being the difference between the player's position and the enemy's position. So transform dot position. I keep missing that S. Minus player. transform dot position. Okay. And we're going to say up, or we're going to say transform dot up equals new vector. Okay. And what we'll do also just for fun of it, we'll normalize it. So you've got basically two spots, two positions, and a vector that points from one to the other. So it will rotate, it will change the up position, it will point that axis in that direction, if all goes well. And I haven't flipped it. If I get the order backwards, maybe, I, maybe it's going to flip it around backwards. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to see any of them. I haven't instantiated anything yet. Okay, duh. Let's go over here. Uh, and... We'll go into rocket physics and just for real, just to be real quick, we're going to say, oh, we're going to create just one enemy, uh, game object, enemy, and we'll say enemy equals 
uh, instantiate enemy prefab. Is that right? What did I do here? No. And I haven't declared that yet, so I better do that. Okay, so I need to come look over here, say player, inspector, it will ask for the enemy prefab there, done. And now I should at least get one enemy, and there it is. And you'll notice it is pointing opposite of the player. <laughs> that means I made the vector backwards. So let's fix that over here and enemy it's player dot transform minus the there we go and that will create our proper vector so that the enemy will point at the player. And that is the cheapest AI ever. Now we can also do something like say, well, we want the enemy to follow the player. So let's give the enemy some force now that the enemy has some direction to him. So enemy update, it's tracking him or her or it or whatever. So we will add a force. And that is easy enough to do. We just say, do, 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 what do we say? Get component rigid body 2D add force and the force is going to be up. Times some number. Times 20. Start with that and see what happens. And let's go. Let's go with that. Wow, that is one crazy, excitable enemy. All right, so now we have two choices. We can either go in here and give him some drag, just like we give the player some drag. So I wanna do that. We'll give him the same amount of drag as the player so we can kind of think things in that same kind of way. Uh, linear drag was one, angular drag was eight. All right. Yeah. Enemy linear drag one, angular drag eight. So he's gonna have a tough time turning now, which is good because he shouldn't have, you know, he shouldn't just be like, wow, he's still pretty quick. Why? Because he's getting his, the force added like all the time. So yeah, he's speedy. <laughs> He's got us at a serious disadvantage here. Let's uh, scale that back, back a bit. Maybe 10. F. Or maybe even, let's start with 5. That's much more kind of playable, doable. He's still pretty quick. All right, so that guy's flying around. Now let's uh, instantiate some asteroids, shall we? Whoa, cancel, let's save. Whoa, there. All right, so back in rocket physics, let's instantiate some 
Asteroids. So we need a asteroid prefab. And let's create a bunch for starters. And we'll use four int i equals zero, i less than eight, or four. <laughs> uh, i plus plus. And we'll just say and maybe we don't even keep track because for now who cares? <laughs> this will at least get them on the screen, I think. It's gonna be tough keeping track of them because I don't have them in a list or anything like that. So maybe it just decided. The asteroid prefab, oh, pff. how many times am I going to make that mistake? There we go. There they are. Whoa. Something is replicating itself. Why did there wind up being two of those guys? That's interesting. Anyone tell me why that happened? Uh, did I do what I think I did? Yeah, I just, <laughs> I did that. That's, that's crazy. All right, so let's stop part A there. So we've kind of done some very basic stuff that's worth trying. So we have made a bunch of asteroids that kind of float around that we can kind of bump into, which is not the ideal thing, but it's starting to feel a little bit more like a, a little gamey here. And I'm going to publish this as the first video, which is plenty long anyway. All right. So I'm going to just uh, surf around like that for a bit and leave you to get ready for part B or part two. And we'll start to fire some bullets or something like that. All right.